All right, then, here is the next theorem that we will prove. If a quadrilateral has equal opposite sides, then it is a parallelogram. Now, we've already seen the converse of this idea. We saw that if it is a parallelogram, then it must have equal opposite sides. But this is a separate idea. Just because something is true doesn't mean its converse is true. So this idea requires its own proof. We will start with a quadrilateral that has equal opposite sides, and we will show that given that, that it must be a parallelogram. So here's the diagram. We're given quadrilateral ABCD, and we're told that AB is equal to DC. Those two sides must be the same, so let's mark them the same way. And we're told that AD is equal to BC. That is equal to that. So let's mark those two sides the same way. And then from that, we need to prove that it's a parallelogram. So what we're going to do is show that that the opposite sides must be parallel. And here's our approach. This is what I'm going to do to prove this. I'm going to draw in segment AC, the diagonal right there, and that divides the parallelogram into two triangles. And I'm going to show that those triangles are congruent by SSS. And then once that's shown, look at this. See this angle here? I'm going to call these angle 1 and angle 2. Uh, those can be thought of as alternate interior angles. If you think of the line determined by DC and the line determined by AB, angle 1 and angle 2 are alternate interior angles. And we have a theorem already that says that if the alternate interior angles are equal, then the lines are parallel. So those two sides of the quadrilateral must be parallel. And then we'll look at angles 3 and 4. I'll call this angle up here 3 and this one down here 4. And those are alternate interior angles for these two lines right here. And again, because those alternate interior angles are equal, those two lines must be parallel. And then since the opposite sides are parallel, it will be a parallelogram by definition. Okay, so let's go through the steps here. Uh, first, AB is equal to CD, that's given, and AD is equal to BC, that's also given. And then we draw in segment AC, and I know that I can do that because any two points determine a line. So just write two points determine a line. There's one unique line that goes through those two points. Okay. Next, I say that AC is equal to AC, so let's mark that. And it, uh, again, seems like we're stating the obvious, but it's really actually important. The reason I know, or the reason I can say that is just the reflexive property. But I'm not just stating the obvious. I'm stating that segment AC, as a side of this triangle, is equal to segment AC as a side of this triangle. So those two triangles are then going to be congruent by SSS, side, side, side. You can see that on the diagram. Let's write this in a way to make sure the correspondence matches. Look here, I'm going to start with this triangle and go around in this direction. And notice that I'm going through the side marked with two marks and then the side marked with one. I'll write that as triangle ADC. And I need to go around the other triangle in the same direction. So I'll go through the side marked with 2 and then the, the side marked with 1. So that's triangle CBA. And you could do it another way as long as the correspondence is correct. But triangle ADC is congruent to triangle CBA. And the, the reason there is side, side, side. Okay, then the next step is if those triangles are congruent, then the corresponding parts are congruent. So angle 1 has to equal angle 2, and I'll mark those. So angle 1 equals angle 2, and the reason is because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Now if angle 1 is equal to angle 2, remember, 
those are alternate interior angles for those two sides so side DC must be parallel to side AB so let's mark that put a little arrow indicator here and here DC is parallel to AB and I know that's true because because there are equal alternate interior angles okay then my next step is going to be similar reasoning with the other angles I'm going to say that angle 3 must equal angle 4 so let's mark angle 3 equal to angle 4 and those are also equal because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent Let's go ahead and write that. Angle 3 is equal to angle 4 because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And if those are equal, then these other lines must be parallel. AD must be parallel to BC. So let's mark this one. I'll put a double triangle here to distinguish it from the earlier one. A little double arrowhead. So AD is then parallel to BC again because equal alternate interior angles mean that the lines are parallel and then we're done look at this you see the markings on the on the figure this and this so those two lines are parallel and this and this those two lines are parallel so the opposite sides are parallel, so it must be a parallelogram, because that is the definition of a parallelogram. It has parallel opposite sides. So for the last step, I'm just going to say the definition of a parallelogram. Okay, and now it is now proven that if the opposite sides are equal, then it must be a parallelogram.